What's up, heroes? I'm the House Ninja, superhero DJ and music producer, and also the host of the Producer Life podcast. And over the last several months, I've been interviewing the 16 contestants from Base Battleground, an epic online DJ competition hosted by Emerald Summers Presents, where DJs go head to head, battle it out online on every other Sunday, and your votes determine the winner. Earlier today, Kid Kong and Ape Tonics both kicked off round two for Base Battleground on the Emerald Summers Presents Twitch channel. I interviewed Kid Kong back in episode 101, but due to scheduling issues, I wasn't able to get Ape Tonics on for the first round. So I'm thrilled to have him on the show tonight, and we're going to talk about DJing and promoting and cybernetic apes and wherever else the conversation takes us. So uh, welcome, Ape Tonics. Thank you so much, House Ninja, for having me on. Thank you so much, House Ninja, for having me on. I'm excited. Tell me, uh, so how did you, I guess I first got to ask about the branding. How did you come up with the cybernetic alien gorilla and that amazing face mask? <laughs> well, um, it all started like when I was like, um, I was just really like, DJing just to be DJing. I was doing hip hop and all that stuff. Um, and then, um, I, I came across like EDM music and I was like, I saw Marshmallow. Marshmallow was the first one that I really saw. He was wearing masks and all that stuff. He was, he was, um, and also Dead Mouse, Dead Mouse. Like, oh my God. I was so amazed by that. And when I was amazed by that, I started to like, hey, I want to get a mask. But I didn't know what my DJ name would be. So I got the mask. When I got the, got the mask, I received the mask. Um, I, I got it from this website. It's called Glow Zitty, I believe. And Okay. And when I had got that, got got it i was like looking through it and i saw the skull on the mask you know what i'm saying i was like yo this would be dope this would be dope to be performing in because i wanted to have a mask too when i started djing for edm music so i started taking the nature of it and how i became a tonics was it was weird because my a best friend of mine told me that yo there's already a DJ Mad Mania. And back then, that's what I was named. Um, and then when we, when we, she told me I had to change it because of the branding and everything like that. And that's very important. Very highly important. Um, um, when I got, I had to really buckle down. I wanted to still be an ape. So I came up with like, so, I came up with, um, I tried Ape Tronics, and I saw there was, there's like somebody named Tronics already, but there's nobody named Ape Tonics. So I Googled that, and there was nobody named Ape Tonics. So that's how I kept it, and boom, that's here you I am. <laughs> Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Good. So, uh, searching online, making sure nobody else has been using it. Um, yeah. uh, why, why the affinity for the ape? Why, why did you want to stick with an ape to begin with? Well, it's because I see, I see myself like I'm tall. I'm like literally like six, four, yo, I'm like a big football player. I'm like a big bear. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> Um, yeah. So, so I decided, you know, I want to keep the gorilla, you know, so you know, I want to be something big, want something massive. Okay. You didn't want to be DJ Fluffy Bunny. Nah, 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 not DJ Fluffy Bunny. Okay. I can't hop around and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, how long had you been DJing before you before you came up with Ape Tonics and ordered the mask and all that? How, how many years were you a hip hop DJ? Man, I was a hip hop DJ for about I want to say about about four years, four years ago, four years ago, 
No, wait, no, 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 not man. It's longer okay. than that, actually. Dang. Probably like ten years ago, I was a hip hop DJ, and I was doing it for like three years. Yeah. Dang, that's a long time. I just realized okay. that. Okay, so it's been a while. How, <laughs> um, now your your current <laughs> time flies. Uh, your your current genre. You you do a lot of dubstep and and bass type music, glitchy stuff. Um, mm-hmm. How does I guess first question is how would you characterize your sound? Um, hard bass makes you want to like mosh it, you know, you're like, I like that heavy stuff. Like I like to go crazy. (laughs) So I prefer my sound to be like the hard bass with the boom sound where you hear the whole stage shaking, you know, I'm more of that. Okay. That how does roll sound. Okay. All right. So hard, hard, um, hard, aggressive, uh, bass music, mosh pit type stuff. How does DJing that differ? Like in terms of mixing and preparing for a set, how does that differ from being a hip hop DJ? Well, I mean, I assume you're still beat matching and everything, but is the strategy different? No, the strategy is, the strategy is definitely different though. When it comes to hip hop DJ, I would say this, it's like, um, it, it's basically the same rhythm when you come to hip hop DJing. Like, cause you hear the boom, 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 the boom, boom, click. Cause you hear that on most of the tracks. So, but when it comes to EDM music, it can go from like high pitch, low pitch, high pitch, low pitch. It can like, it's moving. It's moving around. And it's like different sounds, but blended together to make a one perfect sound. And that's why I love EDM music. That's why I love EDM music. Okay. Um, You've got a a couple of mixes up on your SoundCloud page. I was enjoying the Freakazoid Volume 1, sort of Halloween-themed uh, bass and dubstep mix. Are you are you going to do something again for this year? Um, possibly. I might come out with a Freakazoid Volume Two. Um, I, w- I don't really have no shows coming up or nothing like that. I really was aiming to like work on the um the new track, really. But that's basically it. <laughs> okay. So uh, you're focused on production right now? Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, now, I know the other thing that, that you've kind of got that, that's on your social media page is you're also a promoter. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I also like I promote like, yeah. Yeah. So like um, Ibiza, Atlanta. So I promote my – he's actually a good friend of mine. His name is Phil. Go check out Ibiza Atlanta. I recommend it. That place is lit. It's like a Latin club. But I do, basically, I promote um, huh. events, um, like EDM shows, parties. I just really just create posters. I do the design work for posters and everything as well. Um, most of them, at least. <laughs> but um, I just basically, I just promote okay people like also other dj artists that's trying to get out there i will promote them and like also show them love as well too show them support on their craft and everything yeah i appreciate that you got a great clip of me performing um at one of the emerald summers presents events and uh you you posted it and tagged me in the reel and i really appreciated that so thank you um what what do you think are the keys to being a good promoter? Uh, you want to, you want to have like a continuous continuation of things. You don't want to just stop promoting. You know what I'm saying? You want to be able to, you know, continue posting, continue being marketing yourself when it, and helping, um, uh, helping like other other people you know what i'm saying like when it comes to like promoting and everything you just gotta like keep posting that's all you gotta do 
Because if you stop, you know, nobody's not going to see the images. Nobody's not going to see the, the flyer. People, you're, if you just post it one day, nobody's not just going to, everybody, the whole millions of people in different countries is not going to see that flyer. You know, you, you got to constantly keep doing it. And then everything, after a while, you start making big ass. Ooh, How do you know? I'm sorry. Person on the thing. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, how do you, so I've, I've heard some people say that, you know, when you're posting content as a DJ or, or, or any personality, you know, you, you kind of do a mix of promotion versus stuff for entertainment versus information about you. You, you, you don't want to just constantly be going, Hey, listen to my mix. Hey, listen to my mix. Hey, listen to my mix. Cause people get tired of that. I would think mm-hmm. the same thing might be true if all you were doing was mm-hmm. posting flyers of your show and not sharing, you know, stuff about you and your life and whatever you're working on. So how do you how do you keep that balance and how do you keep that regular stream of content? I think a lot of DJs find that kind mm. of exhausting. You got to schedule yourself. If you schedule yourself to what time you need to post that it will post on itself, and then you can have also schedule the time that it needs to be posted for your music as well too. That's how you got to do it. It's you know you got to just manage the time by like posting one here. Like if you post that event, that's cool. On the next story, it can be a funny meme or whatever, and then boom, here come your music. You know. It's about scheduling. I think that's what it's about, about really scheduling the time um, your post needs to be posted up. And then all the, and that's how you're able to uh, promote your stuff better and organize. That's how, you know, that's what I think. Okay. Are, are you saying schedule time to do the post or you are scheduling the posts in advance, like using some of the Facebook tools to say, I want this post to go live three days from now. Mm-hmm. You can, you can do it that way as well too. But if you want, you can also like put in your notes. Uh, if you want um, a certain poster that needs to be posted up at a certain given time, um, I usually, I usually put in the notes and then I, I post it and then I cross it off. Then if I want something scheduled, but first things first, you got to make the list of schedules first. <laughs> Once you make the list of schedules, then you start going row by row. But not necessarily a big list, but what you want to post, really. <laughs> okay. And now when when you're promoting are you you said you're kind of promoting a lot of different events and DJs and and that's one of the ways you're kind of meeting people and and building up other DJs but do you have certain clubs that you work regularly with other than Ibiza or um uh is it just kind of wherever you're wherever you're currently performing at um it's it's really um wherever I I'm performing at you know I can be I mean, I've been to Domain, I've been to uh, Rio, I've been to uh, Corsabiza, I've been to Iris, I've been to, you know, a lot of places. But it depends on where you're going to be at, honestly. (laughs) Okay. What, uh, what? goes into when you're getting ready for a show, any sort of a show, whether bass battleground or uh, a live performance at Believe Music Hall, what what do you do to prepare? Are you doing a scripted set? Do you just kind of select certain music and pick from that batch? Or how, how do you go about preparing a DJ set? Uh, okay, so I what I normally do is I normally try to organize the songs that I want to be played. And then what I do is I I learn to just listen to each song and try to make sure it beach match correctly. And then after that, that's how I put my cue points in. And boom. Eight tonics is arrived. I mean, 
that, it take it look it literally takes a lot of time i'm not gonna lie <laughs> but when at the end no i i know it's uh, i mean crate digging and yes like it is like sometimes it can be such a headache sometimes like i'll be sometimes staying up until 4 a.m to make sure i found the right song where do you where do you like to go to find your music oh okay so there's this headliner it's called head it's called head what is it headliner what's it called it's called headline something but sometime i usually but you got to pay for them and all that stuff like that and i think it's like what twenty dollars but they give you like all the intro kinds um um, you got house, hip hop, all that stuff, and it's all free once you pay for the subscription. Subscription, but sometimes what I do is I get it all from sound. It's a record pool. Yeah, it's a record pool. Correct. So, um, I think it's called Headliner Music, something like that, which is really good. And I got like hip hop. I got a lot of Headliner hip-hop. Music Club. Yeah, that's it. Headline. Okay. All right. I found it. I'll have to take a look at that. Yeah, that was really good. They yeah, give I've, you like, I've, I've been. Um... Yeah, that was really good. They give you like. Go ahead. Oh. Oh, I was just gonna say they they normally give you like uh, all different kind of genre. They give you like house deep deep bass. Uh, there's a little dubstep in there somewhere. Uh, there's hip hop. There's R and B. Uh, dance music. They got uh, Moomba, all that stuff. And it's like, I love it. Do they do a lot of uh, bootlegs and mashups? No, they don't do. Well, no, they do, actually. There are some, there's a lot of mashups on there. You're going to find a lot of mashups. Uh, bootlegs, kind of, kind of. They do more mashups than anything. Okay. I, okay. Yeah, I, I was part of um, Promo Only for a while, which is another big record pool. And um, I liked what they had, but I swapped to, I started using BPM Supreme a while back, which is another record pool. I like it because it's got an app. So like if I'm at the gym, I can be screening music as I'm going. And they do a lot of mashups, whereas promo only i don't think i heard a single mashup in the year or so that i was a member there so and and i I happen to love mashups so i'm always looking for other good sources of mashups yeah they got really good mashups i think i i played some tonight actually um during the bass battlegrounds against kid kong yo and i found most of those yesterday I said I gotta add these into my set. ASAP. <laughs> yeah. So let's. That's a that's a good uh, good seg way into um, the base battleground event this afternoon. And normally the these uh, conversations I've done before the events. So this is a little different. We're doing it afterwards. So uh, yes. how how'd you do today? I did. I think I did good. Very good. Very good. I think it's enough to beat. Kid Kong, if you're watching this, Kid Kong, I heard about you talking about your banana bread. We eat banana bread. I'm not banana bread. <laughs> yeah, it was hysterical that you two got matched up. I I, I love the way Emerald Summer Presents has done that. Uh, yeah. We had uh, uh, Fetty Wub and Corgan. We had the the cat versus dog episode, and now we've got the battle of the apes. So. Uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. And you guys both had amazing sets. Um, is, is there anything as you're looking back on your set that you would have done differently or, uh, were, were you Boy. completely happy? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say there was one thing in there. Like, I'm not going to lie. When I walked in, cause we did it at Kate Kong's place. Right. So, and it was we basically was on her arena anyway. So I'm just gonna let you know that right now. This is that was Kid Kong's arena, folks. <laughs> but um, it was just... yeah. I, I thought I thought it was interesting the way that you know you guys had the same Twitch layout. 
but it yeah. works because you're both you both got the the primate personas. Yeah. Right, and it was just really. I had got there a little bit late because I was in traffic and everything, but it turned out so well. I had really ran into the house, and the setup was just really nice. When you walk up in there, you're like, whoa, it was nice. But a thing that I would change, um, there was one thing that happened during the set, and I think... um. I accidentally pressed the tempo. I pressed the tempo. Oh, no. And it started going fast. I'm like, oh, oh, crap. I was going, like, too fast. I was going, like, too fast. And I had to slow it down. So I had to start completely over. I That, I would definitely change that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we've all been there. Uh, I, I was curious, you know, the mask is a big part of your persona, but I didn't catch your entire set, but at least the first half of it, I didn't see the mask come out. Why didn't you do your mask tonight? Uh, somebody told me to not wear it tonight. So, you know, the big, let me okay. just say the big boss. <laughs> That was just the big boss. Huh. Was there, was it just concern about it not showing up on the camera well, or do you know? I I think they, I think uh, it was more so, you know, she wanted me to show my, my face and everything. Um, uh, I'm not really anonymous or anything, but you know, um, I think it was more so just really just, you know, this time let people see who who is behind the mask and everything and who's making the music and all that stuff. Yeah. I guess that's the word it was about. I guess that's the word it was about. Yeah. I mean, I, I can see that. I, I, I worry being an anonymous DJ that I miss a certain level of connection with my audience because... I've got the mask in the way, you know, so there's on the one hand, there's kind of this whole mystery DJ thing, which is cool and fun. But on the other hand, you know, there's, there's that connection with your audience. And I feel like the mask creates a, a problem for that. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you have to have to see what people said about your performance and if they, if they prefer it that way, you know, it's been interesting watching uh dead mouse perform because a lot of times he'll either start off with the, the mask and then take it off or vice versa. You know, he'll put it on for a couple of songs then he'll take it off again so it's, you know, yeah. it's a part of the performance, but it's not, he's not trying to hide who he is. Let me tell you, my friend, it is very hot underneath the mask. Very hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wore a cloth mask for a while and I discovered it really muffled my voice. So I moved to this mesh one and I can breathe a whole lot better. Um, it's also kind of nice because when I get in a mosh pit, kind of keeps me from getting my teeth broken. So yes, those work. That's excellent. So, I need to get me um, one. That's excellent. I need to get me one. Yeah. Um, so I want to, I want to double back for a second here because I, as I was getting ready for this interview, I looked at your, uh, your various social media pages and the one that jumped out at me was your Instagram. You've got 15,000 followers on Instagram, but, but not a huge number of posts. What did I, I'm wondering? What was your strategy on Instagram that got so many followers um, with with relatively few posts? How did you, how did you how did you accomplish that? Um, it was basically I so I had that Instagram for like almost ten years or maybe a long like for a long long time. Um, beforehand, it was at it was it was okay. a DJ Mad Mania. So over time, it's like. I just started changing, you know, I started changing up the, the Instagram. I started like taking stuff down, archiving it. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff you can't really see because it's already archived and it's gone. Um, I just started changing the way it looks. Uh -huh. I started, I started changing it uh, even more. I deleted some more photos. Then 
that's when I start putting up the new DJ name, Eight Tonics. And the, everybody starts seeing me. Who's this dude in the mask? Whoa, that mask. And when people start seeing that, you know, people were amazed. Like, they were like, whoa. So over time, I started, like, also networking as well, too. I engaged with people a lot. I talk to people, get them to follow me. Um, I sometimes, I will post up music. A lot of times, randomly, like, sometimes, every now and then, I schedule a time to where the music will be dropped. Um, And then I just start marketing my stuff. After that, um, I think I went on to this also this website called smash the club up or smash smash the club and it's like a music website where they actually uh will promote your music and um they came up to me they were like yo we would like to promote your music and everything like that i was like yo all right say less so they promoted they promoted me and then I started was on their page. I think it was called Dang, I forgot what it was called. It was a long, long time ago. That was the very first one I did too. And people really liked that track. I got like a thousand likes on that one. Um I'm not trying to brag or nothing, but wow. I was I was am, am, amazed when I saw that. No, this is the um, time to do it. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Um, after after a while, it just became like big known. I started taking like uh, professional photography. I had my boy Chris. Um. Uh, I had my boy D Lens. Uh, my boy Anthony. Um. All of them, they actually, they came through with the photos. And then all of a sudden, I started getting followings like that. They see those good quality pictures. They see people DJing. They see flyers at the woodworks. I started getting likes like that. They start flowing in. Okay. So quality content. It's an old account, but you archived a lot of your old stuff. Did, did you, when you archived a lot of the old stuff from your old DJ brand, did you see your engagement drop off? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what happened was like beforehand, when I archived everything, I wasn't getting that much flow of an attention. I wasn't getting that much flow of an attention. Um, what happened after that is like I post up on, on the mask, I started getting like, like a thousand views. I started getting like, I started getting like 500 likes, 300 likes. Like everything just started like building even higher. And it's still building higher. Like it's still building higher. Um, let me see. Where my phone at? Okay. No, actually, I, I'll show you after the interview. Okay. All right. Well, it sounds like, sounds like that really, uh, you hit on something there. So that's awesome. And I'm glad that's taken off for you. What are you, what are your plans for the next six months or so? Um, really, really, honestly, it's just really going to be focused on the craftsmanship and production of creating like new music, um, dropping. I'm hoping to probably, I had said October, to drop the music um but due to some circumstances that happened and everything uh it got pushed back so i'm gonna shoot for like probably november i'll drop something but during the next six months it's all production work okay it's it's really gonna be all production work it's really gonna be all production work okay well, awesome. Well, we'll look forward to hearing, hearing what you, uh, what you come up with and, and your new tracks and where, where can people find you online? Um, you can check me out on SoundCloud. Uh, it's 
Ape Tonics. That's A P E T O N I X. Uh, you can check me on SoundCloud. You can check me out on also Facebook. That's Ape Tonics Music with the Z instead of instead of the S. Um, okay. You can also check me out on Instagram as well too. Um, I'm there all over. Just type in Eight Tonics. You'll know. Okay. I'll I'll have links in the show notes page and uh, thank you so much for your time tonight. And uh, I know that the voting is still live. So if if you missed the performance today make sure to go check out uh at least the clips of it on the emerald summers presents twitch channel and uh there should be a link there also where you can vote for your favorite performance so uh thank you again for your time and i hope you have a great night thank you so much house ninja love you bro